down from above. Glowing scavengers hover in the air. Higher up in the twisted tangle of the canopy is another unique world. It's the lair of the death traps. The great halls of the forest are draped with their lethal tentacles. escape the embrace of the death trap. The stalker faces a slow death, dissolving in a bath of acid. But the need to provide for the colony drives the surviving scouts on. It won't be long before one of these gentle giants is singled out and the fury of the Stalker army is unleashed. The Blue Moon is a land of turmoil and change. Forest fires on the earth can be deadly. On the blue moon, they can be far more ferocious. They can sweep through huge areas, fanned by winds, fueled by the oxygen. The destruction is massive, but the breaks left in the canopy will bring opportunity to others. A new alien is coming to life. The balloon plants. Blue Moon's dense atmosphere will enable plants to float in the sky. The fields of balloons gently sway in the breeze, anchored to the canopy with long tethers. The biomechanists have calculated plants like this could grow to the size of a small hot air balloon. It's an extraordinary vision of what alien vegetation could be like. If you want to float in an atmosphere, you need a lighter than air gas. And the best gas on demand, simply by splitting water molecules, is hydrogen. At first sight, hydrogen might seem to be a very strange gas to use. No, on Earth, in fact, a number of organisms produce hydrogen. You might think, well, that's very alien, nothing like that. Well, no, not really. If we go back to our own Earth, let's remind ourselves about the kelp forests. Because here, we see these great strands of seaweed in a thick water, but supporting themselves with bladders full of gas. Is that so very different from the balloon plants of Blue Moon? I don't think so. Both are equally alien. When conditions are right, the balloons can rise high above the pagodas. It's a simple way to compete for light on a planet where plant life is rampant and space is at a premium. The balloon plants are opportunistic. What they do is when a part of the underlying forest has been removed by a fire, for example, they very rapidly colonize it. They release parts of the plant, which drift away. Here, these giant balloons will join clouds of tiny plants that spend their lives drifting in the sky, the algae. So high up in the atmosphere, there'll be innumerable tiny algae. It's really like the plankton of the Earth's ocean. And this, I think, will give an almost greenish haze to many parts of the sky as these things drift around in colossal numbers. 
So this atmosphere, in a sense, is an enormous larder. It's full of food. And if there is food floating around, especially in the form of algae, then it would be natural to imagine that there will be animals grazing that resource. The floating plants concentrate in vast green clouds and the sky whales scoop them up in colossal mouthfuls. The blue moon will take about 10 Earth days to orbit around its parent planet. There will be five days of light and five days of darkness. The temperature difference creates intense thermals which the sky whales ride with ease. To be an effective filter feeder, you need to be quite large because every time you open your mouth to start filtering, there's a huge drag. So what I see the sky whales doing is spiraling up these thermals and then come down with a large mass behind them because they're big, opening up their mouths and ramming a lot of aeroplankton through. If you're small, you do that, stop and fall out of the sky. Feeding well below the main pod, one sky whale has dropped in altitude. It's the moment the scouts have been waiting for. The lone sky whale continues to graze. It's in mortal danger. The scouts stealthily gain height. They must get above the whale. Gathering speed, they pass low over the whale. And in one swift flyby, it's sprayed with a powerful scent. The whale is marked like a beacon. The stalker army will now be able to find the whale wherever it goes. Panic spreads through the whale pod. The marked whale's only chance is to climb as high as it can on the thermals and try to escape gliding downwind. The scouts now race back to the colony to summon the workers. The idea that a trail of chemicals, pheromones, could be used by the stalkers on the blue moon may seem rather unlikely. Wouldn't the scent be dispersed in the atmosphere? Well, no, I don't think so, because in point of fact, remember, this atmosphere is much denser. Pheromones can be detected at tiny concentrations. It's an economic, cheap way of leaving the trail behind, the trail which takes the workers to their prey. The scouts return sends a wave of excitement through the colony. The sky whale will be lucky to survive. One of the arguments about looking for extraterrestrial life is will it also be intelligent? And many people feel no, intelligence is an evolutionary fluke. But everything else we know about evolution is not only does it find similar solutions, but it finds them again and again and again. Blue Moon stalkers are highly organized, a terrifying adversary. Like the social insects, theirs is a shared intelligence very different to our own. Each worker has a small brain and they don't solve the problem by stepping back from it and thinking about it. They actually solve the problem by having lots of individuals exploring for answers. 